So we've moved on to the hole digging part. Yep. We're going to make it, we're going to go down two feet and we're going to build it up as close to four feet as possible. So we have this uh, magic number of six feet. <laughs> Why is that the magic number? I don't know. <laughs> um, but it seems that everywhere I hear somebody talking about an extremely successful Google man, it was a six foot system. shouldn't use in a hoover culture mound, okay? Shouldn't use pine tree unless it's really old. Too much sap, unless you're trying to grow blueberries on it because then it's gonna be very acidic. Anything that says black on it, that I know of anyway. Black locust, never breaks down. This is what makes it an amazing tree. Black cherry, it has cyanide in the bark. So, iffy. Not sure if you wanna do it, you can burn it. You can make furniture out of it. Um, camphor, all that really aromatic stuff, it's just a little bit too much. Um, seem to think there's a couple more, but in our area, cedar. cedar never breaks down. Yep, yep, cedar's not a good one. I mean, I'm not, not that you can't put them in there, but uh, if it takes them too long to break down, it's really just not worth the time. You just might as well build furniture out of it or make wood or wooden fire or something. But you can sequester into your, um, your soil the more water it can hold. So when the rain comes down, it's like a little cistern that runs on the entire piece of property. Yeah, bowl it. And it's completely available to all, right. all, the, all the plants. All right, so we've got the hole. Is that betony? Oh, just a root? Oh. Yeah. All right. What happens next? Let's throw in the dirt, the wood. Um, uh, we're probably going to throw in... Now we fill the hole back in. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably going to throw in the green wood. <coughs> we have a lot of it. We're going to throw the green wood in first. Because we have to think about it, you know, the roots are going to go all the way down into the system and get to the wood as it rots, and it's going to be fed by the rotting of the wood and the microorganisms activity and all that. So we have to put the green wood in the, in the thing first and a bunch of leaves. I like the leaves because I feel like they wick moisture around. And they rot fast, so they, you know, like the fire, they, they get the other thing kind of ignited and get it started. And then throw a little bit of dirt in there, because you kind of need the material, the mineral component and the, the organic material that's in that soil, get that soil on there. And then start with some more wood, and then as you get more rotten wood, let that rotten wood be more at the top, because, you know, your roots are going to get to it first. And it's already becoming fertilizer at that point, where the, the green stuff is going to be a while before it's fertilizer. So you want it further away, rotting deeper in the ground, it'll eventually turn. But keep mixing grass clippings and hay and like all this stuff and and the leaves all in with everything so that it's all kind of homogeneously or not even well it is sort of somewhat homogeneously like connected and the water wicks around and you know just to me that sounds like a perfect system yeah okay so let's grab some of the green wood and get it going and probably the biggest log Okay, so we're going to put leaves on top of the first course of, uh, of uh, green material, green uh, wood. And we're going to get a hose and we're going to water in each layer because that actually puts the moisture in there where it needs to be. Gets those microorganisms fired up. side soil in contact with this soil and it's all about wicking moisture around in my opinion. You never want to pack anything in because then you're compacting it a bit. But you know by benefit of having rotting material it'll never be perfectly compacted. Can you get a so. specimen of log right here? This level of decomposition. Pretty.
bring it in for a close-up. This right here is uh, pretty much what you're looking for with a hooviculture mount. We don't have a ton of it today, but if you can find a bunch of good rotting wood, that right there is basically soil already. You see that? This is what they try to mimic when they make potting soil. It's, it's light and airy and it drains well. And look how it sucks up water. This is good stuff. So you get some good rotten wood and stick it in your hoogle mound. That's the best way to go. Yep. We've got some more of it over here too, but not a ton of it today. But don't let not having the perfect wood stop you from building a hoogle. So sprinkling seeds is an okay method. Yeah, but then what you want to do kind of like, not all seeds need this, but you'll kind of come back and just sort of rub your hand over it. Okay. And that sort of somewhat buries it. All right, so you don't need to dig or? No, not really. Maybe, no, like said, maybe a poke. It's a big seed, like, like we just did the, uh, the beet seeds. They're relatively sizable. I go ahead and push those in, cover them up, and then we'll come back. And we have tons of chia on here. And chia, you won't need to worry about burying, but some of it's going to get buried just because it's where I put the carrots. Right. All right. So we're going to use them like kale and kohlrabi. Nice. All right. Well, those are all spring. A job well done. Yeah. 